Hello everyone and welcome back to Lakeside. Uh, today is a, a fairly short video, um, hurrah I hear you say. Um, it's primarily about the uh, class 158 which I've now weathered and I've fitted a twin iPhone speaker in to replace the existing speaker and it's made quite a bit of a difference. Um, so you'll be seeing this and I'll talk you through what I've done on that. Um, plus I want to do two shout outs as well. Um, the first one is to Anthony Strathmore Road Junction um, and the reason why I want to do a shout out for him is because I follow his channel. Um, I like his channel. Uh, his um, layout is kind of similar to what I've got here. Um, he's just building a container yard. Um, uh, I think his layout is probably bigger than mine, um, but um, it, it's a nice layout. It's, as I say, it's very similar to mine in the way that I go about uh, producing Lakeside. Um, so have a look at his channel. Um, he's a smashing bloke and um, very approachable and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good channel. Lots of videos on it. Um, so there's that one and the other one is to Ollie Simmons um, uh, and his, his, his channel is Warble Road. Um, I will put both the links in the description below. Um, now he came around the day before yesterday and he did an interview with me um, and uh, that's up on his channel now um, and I think we spoke on the interview for about two and a half hours but he's knocked the video down right down now to about 45 minutes I think and that includes some lovely shots actually uh, of the layout too. Um, so have a look at that. Um, he's got, I say, his own channel, uh, Warble Road, and um, some of the videos on there are absolutely cracking. Um, he does a few how-tos, uh, airbrushing, etc. Um, so it's worth going over to have a look. A uh, very talented young man, actually. Um, so have a look at his channel too. So let's crack on, um, and I'll show you how far I've got with the 158 so far. It's not totally finished with as regards the weathering, but it's not far off it. Okay, so bye for now and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so bye. Hello again, so uh, in front of you, you can see the new class 158 I bought the other week. Um, that was from Rails. And um, I've now taken it apart <laughs> as per what I normally do and um, I've put in a different speaker which is from Roads and Rails and it's the mini twin iPhone speaker um, and uh, it replaced I'll show you the difference actually bear with me so here is the speaker which is fitted which is absolutely tiny um, but you can see the two connectors just there and it actually rests like that and connects to the printed circuit board which is on top just here um, there's two circuit boards one at the bottom and one at the top and the top one is for the LEDs for the lighting and for the speaker and so that where is it here and so that uh, gets screwed to the connector which is just two brass um, plates on the circuit board um, so really it's just a case of unscrewing that from the circuit board and that just comes away very easy um, and this is what's inside I've got two of these um, and this is what's inside now um, and it's certainly a remarkable improvement over that speaker I mean for the size of it it, it actually gives out quite a good sound um, but not great uh, so that is 4 ohms but um, works fine with the Zemo decoder which I got from YouTube's um, and so that took me about an hour 
to take apart carefully because I didn't really know how this came apart. Um, what you have to do is that front snowplow thing um, that's screwed on to the chassis. You have to unscrew that, two screws, and then there's eight clips running for each side along here, which you just put in a. I use a, a paint spatula um, so I don't damage the the bodywork I just click them underneath to release the clips and the shell comes away <coughs> and that reveals uh, say the top circuit board the seating and everything else which is inside the coach uh, there's virtually no wires at all it's do all done through contacts on the PCB um, so you can release that shell no problem um, and then when it was apart I took it all apart, every single screw um, I took out, including the bogies. I took the bogies apart completely. Um, and the reason why I did that was that it saves me all the effort of masking, wiping off any overspray from the uh, weathering. Um, and at the same time, I wanted to lubricate the gearbox. And it's a good job I did because when I took the uh, bottom of the bogey off, it was virtually dry. And this was why I was getting quite a bit of noise from these two motors. There's a motor in each coach, one here, one here. <clears throat> the speaker is associated in that area there, that space. Um, and uh, with a little modification, I've got the iPhone speaker to fit in there, no problem at all. Um, and that's it really. So the weathering is now complete apart from uh, the roof. I've put on a grime all the way across at the moment um, but of course I've got to go over it and put soot marks and stuff by the exhausts but apart from that I think she's now finished um, and I would have done that yesterday but I went and got my paints out and one of the pots had uh, gone off for some reason so I've got to get another pot of paint for that wear brush on the roof and then I can just put a final coat of varnish over the top to protect it all but <clears throat> apart from that she's done sounds great um, I still find it very weird that when it's going this way that way um, that cab light comes on so the rear cab light is on um, I don't understand that. I, I would have thought there would have been a function where you, I mean, you can turn the cab light on and off, but it only comes on in the reverse end. Um, I would have liked it so that when the driver got in up here, for instance, I have put a driver in there, I don't know if you can see. Um, when the driver got in, he can switch his cab light on and then turn it off before moving off. Uh, but anyway, I shall sort that out. Um, I will have it so that the front cab light is working. Uh, been changing a couple of CVs. Um, but I'm pleased with the weathering. Um, I've just weathered it up to just above this line here. So it's the chassis going up to about here, but then I've left all that clean. So it's just a case of carefully with the airbrush feathering out as you go along. Okay, so uh, I've put people in. Uh, I've run out of people. <laughs> so one side is done and this coach here has got none in at all. So I just need to get some more people and take the shell off again, which is a simple process now, um, and glue some people in. But it's getting there. It's getting there. And uh, I think the, uh, the look of it is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want it pristine in this particular case. It's a well used train um, and it doesn't get washed that often obviously. Um, but it's not too dirty that it looks a mess. Okay, so I guess really what we should do now is have a listen. So if you go back to my previous video, if I've still got the clip I'll pop it in. Uh, 
Okay, so let's start it up. And we'll move it off, so I've got lighting on. I've made the doors now a push button rather than a toggle uh, on the CVs because what I found was happening was that when I was pressing the um, function for it, the sound would uh, go on and I would forget to turn the flashing lights off. So I've done it as a press button um, so that it actually turns off when I release it. Um, just another little thing you can do on the CVs. So it's to make it a press button rather than a toggle switch. Um, and if I turn the power off, sorry, not the power, the, the sound. And I'll move it off again. Now, when I first got this, it sounded horrendous. The noise from both the motors was incredible. You'll now get to hear it now that I've lubricated it. Now that's not bad when you consider there is a motor there and a motor there. Very, very quiet. Most of the noise is coming from the wheels, to be honest. So I think that paid off lubricating those two motors and bogies. Uh, the, the gearbox was, as I say, absolutely bone dry. There was a little tiny bit of grease on one of the axles, was, but that was about it. Um, so I guess they put the grease in, but it hasn't spread across to all the other gears within the gearbox. Um, but it's, it's working fine now. So there you go. Uh, I just thought I would um, show you that. And uh, hopefully I can now get back on to doing this area up here which is my next project oh that's something I meant to show you 
while I was at the model shop the other day, I saw this and I thought, oh, that would look really, Royal Mail van, that would look really nice on the road at the back. Um, so I bought myself that as well. It's only a fiver. Um, van, might as well pop that up there. Oh, there you go. One Royal Mail van. Um, okay, so that's it for now, folks. And um, hopefully the next video I will show you will be the progress on the area there. Okay, so bye for now, and uh, I'll speak to you later. Bye.